In the words of Laura Redden Searing, the snow is falling abroad over meadow and moor, drifting silently high and white o'er the sill of our cottage door. Born on a winter's day in 1839 in Somerset County, Maryland, Laura Catherine Redden's life was destined to be extraordinary. Daughter to Littleton John Redden and Wilhelmina Waller Redden, she was enveloped in love and support from her very first breath. At the tender age of 11, Laura's world was plunged into silence due to the illness spinal meningitis. Yet her parents' unwavering love manifested in their decision to learn sign language, bridging the gap of silence and ensuring their daughter would never feel alone. In 1855, Laura enrolled in the Missouri School for the Deaf in Fulton, Missouri. Here, she not only learned sign language, but also the American Manual Alphabet. These skills, coupled with her natural intelligence and resilience, laid the foundation for Laura's future. Despite being struck by a life-altering illness, Laura's journey had just begun. Laura Redden Searing was not one to be contained by societal norms or physical challenges. After graduating from the Missouri School for the Deaf in 1858, she found herself at a crossroads. The lack of colleges that accepted deaf women posed a significant obstacle. Undeterred, Laura chose the road less traveled and embarked on a grand tour of Europe from 1865 to 1869. This journey was her classroom where she studied German, French, Spanish, and Italian, soaking up all the knowledge she could. Her personal life was as adventurous as her educational pursuits. In 1867, she became engaged to Michael George Brennan, though the engagement was short-lived. Nine years later, she tied the knot with Edward Whelan Searing, a lawyer, adding another chapter to her unconventional life story. Laura's thirst for knowledge and her determination to live life on her own terms were clear in her personal life. Laura Redden Searing, or as we might know her Howard Glyndon, was not just a poet but a voice for the voiceless. Her journey into the professional world of literature started in the late 1850s when she began sending her poems to Harper's Magazine. Not long after that, in 1858, her first published essay found its place in the American Annals of the Deaf. This essay was not just an exploration of her literary prowess, but also a reflection of her personal experience discussing deafness, sign language, and writing. Upon graduating from the Missouri School for the Deaf, Laura was offered a teaching position. However, she chose a different path, one that would lead her into the heart of journalism. She joined the team at the St. Louis Presbyterian, where she worked as a columnist and an assistant editor. This marked the beginning of her career in journalism a career that would span several decades and leave a lasting mark on the literary world. But Laura Redden Searing was not just a journalist, she was also an editorialist for the St. Louis Republican. It was during this period that she adopted the pseudonym Howard Glyndon, a name that would soon become synonymous with powerful, insightful writing. As Howard Glyndon, Laura was sent by the St. Louis Republican to Washington, D.C. to document the American Civil War. Her writings from this time provide a unique, personal perspective on the war, capturing the experiences and human interests of the battlefield. This was not her only contribution to the world of journalism. She also wrote for the New York Times and the New York Evening Mail, and continued to contribute to Harper's Magazine. Laura Redden Searing, under the pseudonym Howard Glyndon, made a profound impact in the world of literature and beyond. Her words, her experiences, and her perspective have left a lasting legacy, demonstrating the power of the written word to give voice to those who might otherwise go unheard. Laura Redden Searing's legacy goes beyond the printed word. Born in the early 19th century, she overcame the challenge of deafness to become a celebrated poet and journalist, leaving a mark on the world of literature that still resonates today. Laura's personal life was as complex as her poetry. After the end of her marriage, she chose to settle in California, where she lived until her death in 1923. Her contributions to literature were profound. Writing under the male pseudonym Howard Glyndon, she gave voice to the experiences and human interests of the Civil War era. But her legacy extends beyond her written work. Laura was a trailblazer for the deaf community, proving that deafness is not a barrier to success or creativity. Her life is a testament to resilience, to the beauty of the human spirit, and to the power of communication in all its forms. Laura Redden Searing's life and work serve as a testament to the power of resilience and the beauty of the human spirit.